Hello, we are back for the last in our ammonia plant series of Tea Time with a Technology Advisor. Hi, Scott. Welcome back. Hi, Karen. For the last in our series, I selected a cup I brought back from Japan several decades ago. Not a traditional one, but still a favorite of mine. I like it. I like it. So I went all out with my cup. I have a clarion cup and it says, I want to be like Scott. I had to like uh, make my own. <laughs> Very nice. I don't know if you yes. want to be, but nice. I, <laughs> I want to have all the ammonia knowledge that Scott has. OK, so let's jump into ammonia synthesis. This catalyst, like methanation catalysts, often lasts 10 to 20 years. So we get less questions about ammonia synthesis catalysts than HTS catalysts, for example. Yeah, that's right, Karen. These reactors don't come up very often for replacement, which which means that they have a long time to monitor them. Yes, and while monitoring the catalyst, the typical parameters that are most often monitored are pressures, temperatures, and performance. Let's talk about the ammonia reactor temperature profile. What are we looking at? Well, just something first to keep in mind that if all things are stable in your reactor, and that means flows and inlet temperatures, et cetera, your total DT across the converter should be the same. So if you see issues with performance, one of the first things you're going to check is, what is your total DT right now compared to before you saw the issues? So a reduction in DT could be related to a contaminant, poisons, or catalyst aging. Now for the aging, the change will be slow compared to very rapid changes from poisoning. And as far as contaminants, what is the most common contaminant we hear about occurring in ammonia thin reactors? Well, we covered methanators before, and typically it's CO and CO2 coming from those upstream methanators. During an upset, CO2 often breaks through first, and even going from, say, 5 ppm to 10 ppm could show up in your loop as reduced activity. Yes, and um, often we see some of these reduced activity or poisoning effects being exacerbated by pushing rates. So not that it's bad to push rates, but it's something to keep in mind as you're doing it. Yeah, definitely. We're frequently asked to help troubleshoot issues when our customers are running at those maximum rates. And often what appears to be an issue in one section is in, rea in reality triggered by poor performance in another one. Very true. We are here to help our customers resolve issues and we want them to run at high of rates as efficiently as possible. Thank you so much, Scott. I will miss our chats. Cheerio. Cheerio. It's been a pleasure and happy holidays. Happy holidays.